Why, howdy there. Welcome to Mar Mike's Garage. I hope you guys are ready for some fun. I'm tired of working on lawnmowers for a minute. I've been working on lawnmowers the last six months filming them. I got Cub Cadets, John Deere's, my yard's littered with them. So let's change it up a little bit. What I have got here is a Honda five horsepower pump. And this is what they call a trash pump because it'll suck through uh, poo out of a septic system, it'll suck rocks, it'll suck everything. It's, it's got a larger pump and it, uh, it's a very strong pump. In this pump situation, it has been sitting in my co-worker's attic upside down for the last eight years. So she is not starting at all. And what I want to do is walk through step by step how to get this thing running with really just a 10 millimeter <laughs> socket and a can of car cleaner. Can we do it? I don't know. But I've got, I've got high hopes. Back in my younger days, I worked in a rental shop and worked on a lot of Honda 5 horse motors. And I think I got this. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, get the zoomed in view for you guys and see if I can do this. So any engine that's been stored for seven years with fuel in it is obviously going to have some carburetor issues. So my guess is that this carburetor is gummed up because he told me it ran just fine before he stored it upside down in his attic for some reason. Uh, never store things upside down in your attic. <laughs> so our first step is, we look at this carburetor. Now it's got two nuts here. Now on the right here, they're both 10 millimeter. So let's take start by taking off this one on the side because that one should be a drain and put something underneath it to catch the fuel that comes out because this fuel is going to be gnarly when she comes out. Uh, yeah, you'll notice that fuel, when it goes bad, after a few years, it turns into a like a varnish, almost like a green. Oh my gosh, it smells so, so horrible. So if you can, try to keep that old fuel off your, your hands. You can see right there, it's almost like a brown color. Oh gosh, and hopefully my, uh, <laughs> my spray can cap is enough. I don't know how much fuel is in here. But for the video, we're going with a little spray cap can. All right, you can see we're starting to dribble, 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 dribble. Uh, I'm going to have to just unscrew it. We'll see what happens here. Oh, my gosh, that stuff reeks. Okay. So, as you see here, most of the gas has already been drained out of it. So, we should be good. And then go ahead and take the main one off, too. And once you take that one off, you should go ahead and drop that bowl out. So, let's see if my theory is right. I have not worked on a Honda motor in 20 years since I was 21. Worked on a lot of them back then, but she's been a minute. Oh, look at that. And just be real easy when you take this thing off because you do not want to tear that bowl gasket right there. So you can see here, we're a little stuck. She's a little corroded. Oh gosh, this thing is gnarly. <laughs> look at that. All right, obviously we've got some work to do, but that's the first step is to drain it and pull that bowl out and just make sure to have something to drain it. So let's go ahead and go to the next step. All right, so moving on, what I've done, I flipped the whole pump on its freaking side. I, that way I have easier access to this carburetor for filming and everything else. Now, if you do this, just make sure to flip it on the side with the carburetor up and the cylinder up. That way the oil doesn't rush down in the cylinder. So our next step is we gotta get to the culprit, which down inside this hole, if you'll peek in there, is a jet. It's your main jet, the carburetor, you need to take it out. The main jet is, you can get it out with a flathead screwdriver. It is threaded in there on these Honda carburetors so you can actually work on them. Now you wanna get a flathead screwdriver as fat as you can down in here, not a super skinny one. Now I did lie earlier, <laughs> we do need a screwdriver for this job and not just a freaking 10 millimeter wrench. So get one that fits in there. This one's just about perfect. And it's going to take a little, you'll turn it around, you'll feel where it grabs, and then you'll just have to, it's, it's going to be tight in there because there's a lot of goo and carburetor goo gunk and everything else. So there you go. So I've got this one coming out. Okay, so I've wiggled this main jet out. So you're going to screw it as far as you can, but after that, you're going to need a little gravity on your hand to uh, let it drop down. So I had to tilt the motor back. But when you look at the main jet, this is what the fuel sucks up through the bowl into the jet. And it should be clear. You should be able to see through it. But as you can see on this one here, she's totally clogged. You should be able to see a little light through it, but uh, we're clogged up. So I'm gonna show you how to clean this sucker out. And that way we can get a little more, uh, get the lungs back on this old girl. So let's move on and show you the rest of my tricks. All right, so I still got some more tricks in my book. How are we gonna clean this thing out? 
what I've got is a piece of wire. Sometimes with these small carburetors, even the carb cleaning kits, they're just too, got too much girth on those uh, cleaning kits. So I just get a little piece of wire and you shove it in there and you just clean it out like so and get in there. Then you shoot a little carb cleaner in there afterwards. Sometimes a carb cleaner won't dislodge whatever's in there and just a little piece of wire. So now look at what we got here. Oh boy, you see that light through there? That means when it's a good round little light and you can see all the way through it, that means we've got a clear shot all the way up to the motor. So with these, if you can't figure out to get them cleared out, start with this and then hit them with some carb cleaner and you should be good. So let's move back to that carburetor now that we got this pesky freaking jet figured out. All right, so we're back underneath her, her skirt here. Now let's go ahead and make sure we're cleared. First, let's check out where that main jet screwed in there. Usually you should be okay, but I like to go ahead and just shoot a little carb cleaner up in there. Make sure it's clean and then go ahead and shove a wire, whatever you've got, a little drill bit and just make sure you feel it go all the way up in there. You can see there that one. So we, we're, we're pretty clear there. All right. So let's go ahead and take care of the rest of the main jet. Just, you know, just clean it off. Whatever this goo is, uh, the best you can. All right. So next. Now, if you want to, you can screw that main jack back in here, clean up the bowl and strap it back together and you're probably gonna work. But I am gonna go for extra credit here and remove the float. So what the float does is that it controls the fuel going into the carburetor from your main gas tank. So you just pull that pin off there like so and you pull it off and make sure to hang on to the little pin. And it's all one piece here, as you can see. So that little needle pushes up in this hole and it cuts off the gas. Now, sometimes the little hole gets clogged up and you're not getting fuel into your carburetor. So I like giving that sucker a little shot. You know, just like everything else. And then, uh, it's like all of us guys do, shove something in there, make sure she's cleared out. Now this one does turn pretty tight radius coming in there. So, all right, that's all we're gonna get there. Now, if you want to, you can unhook the fuel line and just to make sure you can blow into it, make sure you're getting a, a free clear pathway for the gas. But since we're doing the short video, uh, this is all we're getting. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and clean her back up and strap her back together. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start screwing this sucker back together. So go ahead and take your jet, and make sure to put the notch side down and it just screws back in that hole like so. Slide it in there. Now, one thing to point out, if you do have access to an air compressor with a little compressed air, that's always a good thing with these carburetors, just to blow it through all the different holes and whatever you see on here, to make sure all your pipes are clean. And don't make that over tight, because that is a brass fitting, so it doesn't need a whole lot. And then you just go ahead and put your float in, make sure the needle point slides back into that hole, like so. Not like that, but like that. And then you just drop your your little float holder motor back in there. And guys, now we're gonna go ahead and get that bowl strapped on. But if you look how simple this is, what happens is that ethanol gas, it just rots in there and everything gets clogged up into that main jet and that is 90% of your problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that bowl cleaned up and we'll strap her back together. All right, so I went and went ahead and cleaned up my bowl. Look at that, took a little scrub brush, a little, little car cleaner there, cleaned her up and then you just go ahead and Slide her back on there. Make sure you've got your carb gasket, your bowl gasket on there. It's always better to try to leave that in there because as soon as it comes out, uh, they expand for whatever reason and it gets harder and harder to do. So just go ahead. It really doesn't matter that much. Or maybe it does matter what direction you slide it on there. But yeah, just slide her up on there. I'll put it so that drain's facing out. And make sure you've got your, your little gasket. There's going to be a little O-ring right there on that guy. And then this one here, you can see already has it. <laughs> this is exciting working on this Honda. Working on Hondas is so much easier than working on a Kohler or Briggs. I mean, they're just really simple motors and the carbs are built where you can work on them. I mean, it's just one freaking jet that comes out. There's no freaking plastic in there. Just real simple. And you go ahead and tighten that down. And guys, I'm not doing anything else. This is all I'm doing to this thing. I mean, it's always good to change the oil and Put an air filter on there, but if you just want to rip and go, I'd suggest just empty the old gas out, clean out the freaking carb out of that jet, make sure you're getting the gas into the carb, and let's see if she works. I'm excited. 
All right, now for the big finale. Will it start? I really have no idea. This thing hadn't run in eight, nine years. Got the car cleaned out and uh, we'll see what happens. So I've got my ignition turned on, choke turned on, fuel on. Got it. So we're gonna let her rip, see what happens here. Guys, just a, just need a pump going or a little uh, Honda motor to get going. Just follow those quick, easy steps. That is all I've done. I do suggest checking out the the spark plug, cleaning it up, putting a new one on there, fresh oil, but uh, quick and easy. So with that, I hope it helps. Please subscribe. Motor Mike out.